Hello, everyone, and welcome to ArtSpan's workshop series. I'm Susan Faith, ArtSpan's Professional Plus member advisor and your host. In the second workshop in our series, we're going to take on the key ingredient to selling your artwork, price. This is a question that I get asked all the time. What should I charge for my artwork? Well, that's a hard question to answer because there are a few variables that have to be considered. So to give us some valuable advice on how to get to that right price, we have with us once again, Artspan's, uh, artsyshark.com's founder, art marketing consultant, Carolyn Edlin. Welcome, Carolyn. Hey, Susan, thank you for having me. Um, it's a real pleasure to join you uh, this evening and thanks everybody who's attending this presentation. I'm very excited about the topic tonight and anxious to get started, so welcome. Okay, you wanna tell us and give us a brief intro of what you're going to be showing us today? Yes, so tonight's topic is pricing. Now, pricing is a very big topic. So I won't be able to cover every single aspect of it this evening. I'm gonna put on a presentation for the purpose of helping you make sure that you are earning money every time you sell your work. We want to make sure that you're profitable, that you are right side up, that you aren't losing money. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to present a slide deck tonight that's going to do two things. First of all, we're going to build a price from the ground up. And I'm going to go through all the line items so you're aware of what your expenses are, what goes into a price. We'll talk about markups. And this formula will also help you whether you're selling retail to the public, whether you're consigning, or whether you're even wholesaling your work, you will be profitable in all of those situations. The other thing that we're gonna take a look at is what the market will bear and how you can find your place in the art market and hopefully we'll resolve those prices so that you know you're making money and I'd love to know that you're giving yourself a raise as well after this. Oh, very good. Yeah. Okay, well, without further delay, I'm going to give you the spotlight. Okay. And I will see you on the other side. Okay. So I'm, let me see. I don't Here you think go. I have that. Nope. Okay, so I'm now the host. All right. <laughs> Just got to get my technical stuff in gear here. And I'm gonna be sharing a screen here um, and start my presentation. I wanna to go to my slideshow at the beginning and this should show full screen. Let me know if it doesn't. Looks good, uh, looks you, good. All right, so we're looking good. All right, everything is working tonight. So welcome to my presentation on pricing for profit. My name is Carolyn Edland. I am the founder of artsyshark.com. Please stop and uh, check out my site whenever you like. We have hundreds of free articles on the business of art and certainly many on pricing. So if you want to learn more about that, come and see me. So as I promised, we're going to get started by talking about a basic pricing formula. And this formula is going to consider all the different elements of pricing. And we're going to go over in, in and additional slides, what these line items are. So here's the basic price formula, which is your overhead, plus your materials, plus your labor, any cost of sale expenses, and your profit margin. And what those equal as a total is the artist's share of a sale. All right. This is a lot of stuff that's coming at you, but let's start looking at the first line item, and that's your overhead. And these are the costs that you will incur on a regular basis. So maybe you're getting a monthly bill for your business phone, or you have a monthly studio rental to pay, uh, your, the cost of your website, any insurance, anything that is a regular expense on your business and you're going to take that into account and consider what does it cost me for a month's worth 
of expenses to keep my business going. Then you're going to divide that total by the number of pieces approximately that you would create during the month so that we can assign a portion of overhead to each piece. Now you may be making larger pieces and smaller pieces. You might want to assign a little bit different, you know, uh, um, cost to the larger pieces than you would to a smaller piece. But this is an exercise so that you understand eventually, hmm, I see that overhead is about 15% of my price so that I can assign it. This isn't something that you'll be adding up every time you make a piece of art, but this is an exercise for you to look at so that you can assign costs to your pieces and that you will come to know what is the cost that's going into each piece that I'm creating. Our next line item is going to be materials. And those are the products that you use that, is, that are gonna go into your art. Maybe if it's wood, textiles, glass, paint, and canvas, whatever your materials are, look at a particular piece that maybe you make, uh, you know, paintings that are 11 by 14 on a regular basis. How much does it cost for that canvas? Assign a cost for the paint. What goes into the gesso? What goes into that? So that you can understand what your costs are. And if you are using found materials, you're going out and you're finding things or you're looking for upcycled materials, then what is the cost of your time to go and locate those. So we have our overhead cost. That's easy to understand. Materials of cost, of course, that's going to be included in our formula. And next, we're gonna be looking at labor. And yes, this is a picture of me in 1980, throwing a ball on the potter's wheel. <laughs> it's an oldie, but a goodie. So, Next, we wanna be looking at labor. And this is your work, your valuable time in creating work, and your time is worth money. So you're going to assign yourself in this formula a, an hourly wage. What is your time worth? What do you want to earn? What do you need to earn to make a living? Are you replacing another job with your art business and do you need to make a certain salary that you're paying yourself? So I want you to figure out an hourly fee that you think is approximately right and we're gonna add that in. So for example, sometimes I'll talk to an artist and I'll say, well, what, what do you think you're gonna charge per hour? And I have literally heard people say, well, you know, I don't know, maybe $10 an hour. And I say, well, how about $50 an hour? I would like to see you paying yourself very well. And when you look at your end prices, you might find that you are in fact doing really well, or maybe you need to increase that a little bit. So this is going to be a guesstimate to put in. So if, for example, I was making this bowl and I knew that my labor in throwing this pot um, trimming it, bisking it, glazing it, uh, firing it again, and finishing everything with my labor was a half an hour. And, I, and let's say I wanted to make uh, $30 an hour. So I would assign $15 an hour to this pot for my labor. That's how that works. So you're going to have that as the third element in your price. Now, the next line item is cost of sale. And this one is a little trickier. This is the cost that you incur to bring your work to market if you yourself are not selling it. So let's say you're going to be wholesaling your work. If you're wholesaling, then you might be going to a trade show. And so we need to build in the costs of bringing your work to market so that when those buyers come in and place orders, that we've built this into the price before they take it. Because if they're going to be buying it, 
at wholesale price, which is the same as the artist's share that I mentioned in the opening slide. If you're looking for uh, galleries to consign with and you've got costs in finding those galleries, whether you're enlisting assistance, maybe you're doing a mail out, maybe you're making phone calls, all of the time and expense that you have, because these, these are the costs of you working with that middleman who is going to be doing the marketing and selling. Maybe there's a sales rep involved in there. There are some commissions or um, a, an online trade portal. So it is possible that cost of sale will not figure into your formula. That would happen if you yourself are selling directly to the public and you're not incurring any costs to bring a middleman on board. So your cost of sale could be zero or that could be involved. And the last item is profit margin. So what is profit? People really get confused about this. They might think, oh, I went to a show. Uh, it cost me $500. I made $2,000. Therefore, I made $1,500 profit. That's actually not true. <laughs> the profit is not what you take away from a show. A profit margin is a separate um, line item in your price on top of your labor. And this is the money that you put back into your business to help it grow. So maybe you're going to go to uh, a workshop or a training to improve your skills. Profit could go for that. Maybe you're going to buy a piece of equipment to help your business. Or maybe you've got to manage things during the slow season. So you need a little extra cash flow that you're going to keep in that business account to get you through until your busy season again. I like artists to plan for 20 to 30% profit margin in their prices. All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna scroll back up to this first formula. Overhead, materials, labor, cost of sale if applicable, and a profit margin all need to be factored in to the price of any given work of art. Now, will you be doing this for every piece of art you ever make? No, you're going to come to know what your costs are, but this is an exercise that can be very revealing and very important for you to be able to know what is your bottom line so that you can go into a gallery and say, for this 16 by 20 painting, I know that I need to make $250 and I can't take a penny less because otherwise I wouldn't be making money. So let's go scroll through to where we were in the presentation again and we were up to the profit margin. And then I want to look at the markup to retail price. Now here's where we're going to split out where, whether you are consigning or wholesaling or whether you are selling to the public yourself. Remember I told you we'd build a profit in so that you were making money regardless of how you sell. Well, the artist's share of the price is what you get when the gallery sells your work and they're taking half. With your half, you know that you are profitable. And the typical markup is 100%. That's called Keystone. There are some uh, retailers that do mark up more than that. So if you sell your work outright, they may mark up more than 100%. If you're working with a gallery, you will be agreeing upon the retail price they'll be taking their percentage and you know that at half the retail price, you are profitable. But when you retail your own work, you need to mark up the price 
to cover your costs of retailing. Now, why is that? Because when you retail your work to the public, you are now stepping into the shoes of the retailer. We know that galleries and stores have their own costs involved in selling. They have their own formulas to make sure that they are also profitable. But when you are the retailer, you're marking your work up to the full retail cost so that you can pay yourself for marketing and selling and cover your costs. And let's look at some of those line items. We know that many artists can spend up to 50% of their time marketing and selling their work. And your time is valuable. You need to pay yourself for being in the studio, but you also need to pay yourself for all of the other marketing and sales activities because otherwise you're giving your time away for free. And if that's what you're doing, then maybe you're actually not earning money. If you go to a fair or a festival, you're going to have an application fee, a booth fee. You're going to have travel time and cost. You're going to have to stay at a hotel, perhaps meals, all of those expenses come out of the second half of the retail price, which is your markup. And if you're having it, uh, a studio sale, then your costs for putting on your display, sending out postcards, hosting everyone, having cheese and wine, spending your time with them. If you are retailing online, which you might be doing at Artspan, well, you're setting up your website, you're managing your marketing, you're driving people to your website, possibly through social media, or perhaps you're doing email marketing. And those costs must be covered. That's the markup to full retail. So we're keeping you as the retailer consistent with the price in a gallery or store. And that is very important, folks. Your price should not vary from what the gallery is selling for a similar item. And here's why. Because if your gallery is selling at a $200 more than you're selling a similar painting, then you are undercutting them. And as soon as they find out what you're doing, they're gonna drop you pretty quickly. So you must be consistent across the board. The price in the gallery, the price in your booth, the price on your site for similar items should be the same. And in that consistency, it's also gonna keep you out of trouble with your collectors. Here's why. If someone buys something from a gallery and then they go and look at your website and go, wait a minute, I could have gotten this for much less money from the artist. They're going to be furious because they'll feel like the gallery is gouging them when they're really not. Or if you sell something at a show, which is higher and it's lowering on your website, people are going to become angry because they'll feel like they overpaid. So keep that consistent wherever you're selling. Now, after you've done the formula to kind of come to know what all of your costs are, to look at what you're, what you're able to produce in a month, to assign your costs to each piece so that you, you can get a good feeling for what your prices should be, you can make it easy by using a simple technique like pricing per square inch by square foot if your work is large, pricing it per linear inch or linear foot, if that's your formula. And actually, these are two different ways to look at it. And I'm going to show you a slide that compares these two methods. And also, if you are taking commissions, I would absolutely encourage you to add a percentage on because there's extra labor and time involved. And there's certainly that kind of, you know, pain in the butt factor with some 
uh, commissions that you might take because you've got to deal with somebody who needs things that they're happy with and want you to redo things and so forth. So let's go back to per, per square inch and per linear inch. What is the difference between these two? And this is an easy way to price two dimensional original art. So square inch is height times width. So if you have an eight by 10, eight by 10 inches is 80 square inches. Linear inches is width plus height, eight plus 10. So your total linear inches would be 18 linear inches. Now these are completely different measurement systems, but I prefer linear inch and let me show you why. I've created a table here that shows the way that prices increase when you use the two different methods. If you price your work per square inch, then you're gonna to get to a size of about 18 by 24 where it's going up gradually and suddenly you get a big jump in price to the next size up. And if we were to go up to like 40 by 60, it would really take a huge jump. And because of this, uh, and it's just due to the, the math, some artists will say, well, you know, I'm charging a dollar per square inch up to 18 by 24 and 80 cents per square inch over that just to kind of accommodate that. But if you work per linear inch, you're going to have that gradual increase. To me, that's an easier way to work. This is just a suggestion. You don't need to price this way. It's a way to make it easy to give a quote to somebody. When you know what your work is per square inch or per linear inch, you can instantly give a quote. You instantly know what your price would be at any size. And it's just a way to make it easy. So we've looked at the formula that took into account all of the different line items so that you don't forget what your costs are. We looked at the markup so that if you're consigning and you're handing your work off to a retailer, you're profitable at your part of the retail, retail price. And if you're selling to the public yourself, you're also keeping your markup consistent and you're paying yourself for all of the activities and all of the costs involved in acting as your own retailer. But there is another thing that we need to look at as well. You know, we're just adding this up. We're adding up the math. Does your final price make sense? Well, we're going to also look at what the market will bear for your art. And this is a price check for you in the marketplace. Now, basically, what is your art worth? It's worth what people are willing to pay for it. Someone, in order to buy your art, needs to feel that your work is worth more than the money that they're going to take out of their pocket to pay you for it. So we need to know that our price is viable in the marketplace. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to your formula and look at your costs and so forth. Your sales history is pretty much going to be the way that you determine your current prices if you are an artist who has experience in the marketplace and you've got a lot of sales under your belt. So that you know for this item over here, I know that I can charge $500 for it because I can get that amount on a regular basis. But if you don't know where your prices should be, or maybe you're just starting out, you need to do some research. Look out there in the marketplace to find out where your work fits. And this actually isn't hard to do because there are ton, tons of prices of art online. So start out by looking at your peers. Look at artists who have approximately the same amount of experience that you do. Their work may be somewhat similar. Maybe they're working in a similar medium, similar uh, subject matter, similar sizes. 
how does your work compare with other similar artists and what are their prices? Specifically, not only what they're charging, but what are they actually getting? Now, if you go to an art show, this is a great place to do some research. Walk around and look, are these my peers? Are people at this show similar to my skill level, what I'm offering, and how much are they charging? Am I coming somewhere you know, out in the same neighborhood as they are? Um, so find out what those prices are. Now, when you go into the marketplace, you're gonna need a little bit of space in your price to negotiate. Perhaps you're giving a 10% discount to a regular customer because you want to thank them for being a, um, a, a collector and buying more than one time. You also should have a list of your retail prices available at all times. You never want to go into a situation where someone's going to ask you a price or you have work for sale and you are not aware of the retail price. Why? Because you need to calculate it ahead of time and make sure that you are profitable. Again, the point of this entire presentation is to make sure that you are right side up and you're not losing money. Because if you're losing money, your business is going to go downhill. You need to be able to confidently price and you need to be able to defend those prices. So if a gallery owner says, why do you need $400 for this piece of art? Or if someone comes up to you at a show and they say, I like this, but why is your work worth this much? Why is this the price? Then you'll certainly talk about the value of your work, but you'll also say, I have a lot of costs built in and I am a business person who is in business. And this is the price that my work must be in the marketplace. So let's talk a little bit about working with a gallery so that if you're on a consignment model or if you would like to have a gallery opportunity and you get a chance to do a sit down with a gallery manager or owner, let's talk about um, a couple of um, bullets on that as well. Again, I do not believe that the gallery is gonna set your prices and here's why. Either they're gonna set the, gallery, the price too low and you will not make what you need to make, and then you're losing out. I mean, I have certainly heard artists say, well, by the time the gallery took their commission, I didn't make anything on that painting. That's unfortunate, but that's really the artist's fault because they didn't walk into the situation knowing what they truly needed to earn so that they would be profitable because they are in fact in business. And that's one reason why you're going to walk into the gallery with that retail price list and you will agree on what the retail should be. Possibly the gallery owner thinks that your work is worth more and that might be part of the discussion. If the gallery says, I'm going to double all of your prices, watch out. Because what if they do that and they sell nothing? Well, then your prices are stuck at twice the price and they're not even reasonable. So I would be very careful of just taking the word of somebody who gives you a random price that doesn't really line up with what you feel the retail should be. Now, it's my feeling that a gallery should receive 50% commission or less. Many galleries charge 50%. Sometimes they charge less. Well, what if they only charge 40%? Well, then guess what? You're getting 60%. Good for you. You'll get more than you thought you would get. But always make sure that you have a written contract so that you have everything in writing. You agree on you know, what the prices are, what the commission is, so that there's no misunderstanding. All right. Now, I am right at 630, which is exactly where I wanted to be for this presentation. So I'm going to wrap my, my uh, slide deck up here. Again, come and visit me at www.artcshark.com for more topics, uh, certainly a lot more about pricing. And then I'm going to stop sharing this presentation and go back in 
to the discussion with Susan, who's got some questions lined up. Okay, I'm going to reclaim my rightful place as host. <laughs> yeah, get your real estate done on this discussion. <laughs> okay, here I am. <laughs> that was great. What great information. I hope everybody is taking notes because it's really, really good information, especially if you're just starting out and you don't know how to deal with um, galleries or setting up your independent website with your pricing. So um, one question that we have that I think comes right on the heels of this is uh, when should I raise prices on my artwork or lower them? Okay, that's a great question. And I'll tell you right off the bat, I never like to see anybody lower a price. I think we know that pretty much out in the marketplace, Prices go up, not down. So it could be that in a certain situation, an artist finds themselves in a position where they really can't make sales because they've priced their work too high, in which case you're going to have to make that adjustment. But let's talk about when to raise prices. What I like to see is that when an artist is successfully selling pieces of their work, over time, and I mean for months, like six months of selling on a regular basis with little resistance from the public, or maybe people are buying more than one piece, you know, they're, you know, you're uh, finding out that there's absolutely room for you to increase, then I would suggest 10 to 20% a year and just test that see whether there's any pushback on that, kind of settle up the new price. And if you can still inch it up a little bit more, give yourself a raise. Very good. Um, okay, what about um, another question that relates to this one as well. Should I have sales or discounts for some clients or at different times of the year? You know, um, I love a sale just like any shopper. And I'm sure you do too. So I'm not against having sales or giving discounts or maybe even very special discounts to only repeat customers or your mailing list. You, know, you could certainly have very special kind of hidden sales. Um, and sure, if you want to clear out some work that isn't selling, you want to, you want to discount it. Or maybe you're discontinuing a body of work that you're no longer making. I think that it's certainly appropriate to give some kind of a price break. That is going to incentivize people to buy. But here's where a problem can come into play. If you're constantly discounting, maybe because you fear not being able to sell or you, know, you think it's all about price. And trust me, folks, pricing is important. But making sales is not all about price. If people love your work and they really want it, generally they're going to find a way to afford it. And if you have a price point spread where you've got some lower priced items and some higher priced items, they could certainly buy in at a lower price. Now, if you are constantly marking down that's going to teach your customers that they don't need to pay full price. I remember speaking with a jewelry artist at one point who had a monthly sale and she happened to email one of her best customers and she said, oh, I've got these new designs that are coming in. You might want to buy one. And the customer said, I will, but I know you're going to have a sale so I'm going to wait. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that was about the last thing she wanted to hear, but you know, it happens. So make sure that you're only offering discounts occasionally or maybe under special circumstances. I think that's good advice. Um, another question was, should I have a different price structure for different mediums that I work in? For example, oil paintings versus watercolors. You know, I think that's a great question. And I certainly think that would make sense. Now, your time and your labor, I believe are probably the most valuable things going into it. So although oil, for example, is considered the priciest medium, I mean, there's a perception out there. I mean, 
the public also thinks that bigger should be more expensive. That's not always true. Okay. However, you might have a pricing structure for your watercolors, but what if your watercolors are really complex and your oil painting is really fast and abstract? It depends on what your costs and your time involved are, but you might want to do that for different bodies of work. I think it's going to be an individual decision. Okay. What's your take on that, Susan? Because I know um, I, a I, gallery owner, I you think you hit it. on that very well because having run a gallery, it, yes, oil paintings are the Cadillac of mediums. Everybody feels and unrightly so that an oil painting is more expensive than a, an acrylic painting or a watercolor. Mm -hmm. I don't find that to be um, realistic, but it is what it is. So it is, I think it's a popular perception. Yes. So it's, it's something you have to struggle with. Again, it takes mm -hmm. um, educating your customers as to, you know, what makes your the medium you're working in essential for your work. And once you do that, then they become more uh, accepting of whatever price you're putting because they don't feel like, well, it's not an oil painting. No, it's an acrylic painting for a reason. It's a watercolor for a reason. So that's that's a good way to go to, to you know, head off that and misconception. And you know, let me mention something here. You talked about raising prices. Um, one of the ways... We're, there's actually two ways. If, if you're finding that your pricing isn't coming out right using the formula and you say, my prices are too high, there's two things that you can do. Lower your costs and increase the perceived value of your work. Now, if you can use less expensive materials or maybe buy them at wholesale or you know, go in with some other artists and get a co-op price, if you can become more efficient in your studio, if you can use technology to help you speed processes, that's always good. And that will lower your costs. But if you can increase the perceived value, you can actually get a higher price. So, you know, there are different ways to do that. I mean, certainly where you sell is going to make a difference. If you're selling your work on the street in a street fair, what's the perceived value there? Well, what if your work is in a fine gallery? Is it perceived to have a higher value? Usually, yes. And there are ways to increase perceived value by what you build in to what you make. So for example, I'm just gonna give a, a quick example. If you are selling a lidded ceramic vessel that's carved, it's beautiful. What is the price going to be at that street fair? Maybe $100? Well, what if the purpose of that vessel is a funerary urn and it's going to hold your mother's ashes. And so it's sold for a very special purpose. Now, what is the value? Maybe $300, $400. So if you sell your work in a different market or with a specific purpose, you might find that it's worth more. So there are a lot of variables out there. And I certainly want to see everybody get the highest perceived price that they can for their work. Well, that's good because that answers. We did have a question of whether um, offering limited edition prints, signed limited edition prints, as opposed to just using the prints on demand services was a question. Yeah, and, I, think, I think that's why. I mean, a limited edition is something that people use for the purpose of increasing the price. It's, it's a way of creating scarcity. Um, and so certainly you could limit editions your signature is added value. A certificate of authenticity is added value. Um, you know, there's all kinds of other things you could put together as a package. If you show up and install the work, that's added value. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a few ways to increase your prices. Okay, and I think our last question is, um, because we already answered, what can I do to, to bring more value to my art? But you've already answered that question. Mm -hmm. Um, is uh, the question was, is there a formula for pricing prints on demand based on the price of my original artwork? Okay, so this is a very big question. And I think you and I might discuss this together because Artspan certainly offers print on demand. And you may have some of your own suggestions, 
you know, given uh, the situation uh, at the platform. Now, artists who can, let me back up a little bit. The least efficient way to sell your work is to make an original and sell it and then go back to the proverbial drawing board and make another original and sell it because you're only getting the sale of that one piece. If you can make it and sell it over and over and over, that puts you in a position to leverage your work. Now, certainly photographers have this, digital artists have this, this benefit, or any fine artist who offers reproductions or prints of their work gets to sell that image over and over and over. So when we look at our costs, it's almost like they're amortizing over time because our costs decrease the more we sell of that image. Um, so if you're doing print on demand, it's important to know what is the cost to you as the artist of that print. So let's say I'm going out to a fine art printer and I'm having something printed and it's costing me $20. Quite often, fine art printers in general will say, you should triple the cost uh, you know, of the print that you're buying from me. And that's probably a good idea because you're gonna possibly have shipping involved and, and so forth. Um, but I understand that there's a special situation at ArtSpan. Well, at ArtSpan, when you use prints on demand, uh, the cost of the printing it, it is of no concern to you because all you need to do is to set the price for your image, how much you want for the use of that image for you know various sizes. You have the option of up to six different sizes that people can purchase, or you can edit that down to just only offering one or two different sizes. So say you set the price for your image, how much you want, to, you know, that gives you a good profit, mm -hmm. say for, you know, just to pull a number out, $100. Well, that is what you would get less, uh, you know, credit card fees and things like that, or commissions if they're applicable. Um, and the rest of the cost that is incurred for the paper that they choose, the mats if they want it, frames if they want it, all go to the printer. So you do not have to worry about adding on those prices to your, your profit margin because it's already taken care of. So if I were selling for $100, it would mark up from there to cover the printer's costs. To cover yeah, the well, what, uh, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to share my screen real quick mm -hmm. and bring up an image. Okay, what I have here, this is what uh, a customer would see when they're getting ready to check out. And as you could see, this print here was priced at $75. That's included in the price. But their final price is $183.95 because they've added a frame. They want two mats. And of course, then there's the um, assembly fee. So their final price is $183.95. So if you want to adjust your price to make this either lower or higher, you have that option. So in other words, you're, you're just determining that you want that $75 for that. Right. So I there's, think that's, I mean, there's no work involved for you. Right. Either. The only thing the artist has to do is upload the image. And I, this is where, when, when you can leverage your work, this is where you can really make some money. If you are only making originals, you can't leverage your art. The only thing you can leverage is your collectors. So folks, if you are only making originals, you're gonna leverage your collectors by having, by having them buy over and over again. So you're want, going to wanna to be working on your marketing. But if you expand to offer reproductions, that puts you in a position to earn over and over again from that same image. And that's gonna just add to your own bottom line. And that's gonna give you an income that's steady. I think it's a great argument for offering reproductions 
unless that's something that you just simply don't want in your business model. But anyone here who's on this call who's not offering reproductions might want to consider how that will increase their income with very little work because all you're doing is using the image that was uploaded. And I know that your staff is examining every image that's uploaded so that they know it's printable when it's put on the site. Exactly. So what I'm, what's going to happen after this workshop is I'm going to be following up with an email probably next week. And that email is going to have the recording of this webinar that we've had today, but it's also going to have information on how to apply all the things that we've learned today to your Artspan website and your shopping cart. And that will include how to price the original art, how to add your own prints if that's the way you want to go, and most importantly, based on what we just talked about, how to properly set up prints on demand so that you get the most from that feature. So you can have, you know, look out for that next week in the email if you've attended this webinar. Also, if you have any uh, questions that we did not cover today, Carolyn or I, you are free to call me at susan at artspan.com. I'd be more than happy to answer your questions or at least direct you to someplace where you can get the answer that you need. As Carolyn has mentioned, you can find more information about pricing your art, as well as all other kinds of information for artists marketing at rcshark.com. You can also get information at artspan.com. Just click on articles. You'll find great pricing advice and website advice and all the tools you need to navigate this business of being an artist. Um, lastly, I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to uh, urge you to fill out the survey. There's a question about what you'd like to see us do more webinars about. We'd like to hear from you. Um, we know this is a tough business to be in and we want to, you know, service your needs as best we can. So please do that. Thank you for your questions that you sent. Thank you, Carolyn, for another great webinar. And I look forward to our next webinar coming soon. Thank you, Susan. Take Thank care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.